Welcome to today's lesson. Today we're going to be talking about the slope of a line and we're going to be finding the slope of a line when either given a graph or two points. So first let's talk about what slope is. Slope is defined by the steepness and direction of a line. The steepness and direction. So that's what it's defined by, the steepness and direction. It is found by calculating the ratio of the vertical change to the horizontal change. So a ratio is just a comparison of two numbers using division. This is the constant rate of change between points on a straight line and is represented by the, by the variable m. So when you see an equation of a line, the variable m is what we use to represent the slope. So from a graph, when we talk about slope, again, there's that variable m, we talk about rise over run. So when we're finding the slope on a graph, we're looking for the rise over run. And this gives us our change in our y values. And if you're in algebra two, upper level, change in y over change in x. So when you see that little triangle like that, that's a delta, it means change in y. So we're looking for the difference in our y values, and we're gonna put that in our numerator over the difference in our x values, and we're gonna put that in our denominator. So if when we look at this first example right here, I've got a line that rises from left to right, it goes up, okay? And between two points, now when I'm looking at a graph, when I'm looking at two points, you see how that point right there, it crosses like where these two integers cross on the line or the lines that represent integers. And then I've got a point right there. I'm looking for the rise over run. How many do I go up and over to get from one point to the next? I'm gonna go up and again, you start with zero. I have a lot of students that really struggle with, what do I start with? I start with zero and then I go up one, two, three. So I went up three and then I go over two to the right two up three over two i rose three and i ran two and that's the slope so there are different types of slope and i've got four examples right here you've got one that when from left to right it rises from left to right we call this slope a positive slope whoa that is not how you spell positive positive and then you've got one that falls from left to right, it goes like that, it's that shape. That's a negative slope. So it doesn't matter the steepness, if the direction is lower left to upper right, that's a positive slope. If it's upper left to lower right, that's a negative slope. Any degree of steepness. And then you've got your horizontal line right here, it's just like that, that has a zero slope. And then your vertical line, just like that, that has no slope or undefined. It's no slope. There's a lot of tip tricks out there to help you memorize this. I use a slope cheer in my class, positive, negative, zero, no, x equals y equals now you know. You also see crazy slope guy, you see ski bird, you see a lot of different things out there. Anything to help you remember the different types of slopes. So now let's talk about the steepness of a line. So the slope of a line is its steepness, and some lines are steeper than others. Slopes with bigger absolute values are steeper than others. So absolute value is always positive. So let's look at line A and line B. And the question over here says, which line is steeper and why? So you might just be able to look at it and tell which line is steeper. Obviously, I can see visually that A has a much more difficult incline than B, okay? If you're running ramps at a stadium or something, which ramp do you wanna run up? Uh, a or B? Uh, I don't really wanna run up A, but I certainly remember doing that in college. So let's look at the slope of line A. So when I'm looking at rise over run, and I'm actually gonna zoom in here, and I'm gonna pick two points, two points where it crosses um, to 
two lines where you see two lines cross and I can actually see a bunch right here so there's a bunch of points on that line and it doesn't matter if I find the slope between which two points because it's a constant rate of change it'll be the same so let's look at these two points right here how many do I go up and how many do I go over to get from one point to the next well I'm gonna go up two over one so my slope of line A is 2 over 1, which is just 2. Anything over 1 is itself. So now let's look at the slope of line B. The slope of line B, if I find some points on this line, looks like this. Now, as you can see, it's going a different direction. I can look at this line and visually see that my slope is going to be negative. I know that whatever the steepness is, whatever the number part is, it is going to be a negative slope. But a lot of students really like doing slope this way. You can see on this uh, line that's red, it's, it's because it's rising from left to right and I go up and over, my triangle that I'm drawing looks like that. Okay, it's above the line. So when I move up and to the right, I'm going, I'm, my numbers are positive, okay? Well here, in this case, to get from one point to the next, I'm gonna be going down and to the right. Well, if I'm going down, would my number be positive or negative? It would be negative, so that's negative one, and I'm going over to the right, positive two. So in that case, it is a slope of negative one over two, which, my slope is negative and it's one over two. So now let's look at which line is the steepest. So slopes with bigger absolute values are steeper. Well, what's the absolute value of two? It's two. What's the absolute value of negative one half? It's one half. Which one's bigger? Two. So line A is steeper. But here's how I'd write this. Line A is steeper because I will never forget my calculus teacher in high school always said, use the word because, because is your friend, use it. So because is your friend, use it. If it says why, or explain, or justify your reasoning, line A is steeper because the absolute value of 2 is greater than the absolute value of negative 1 half. And if you wanted to write that out in words, you absolutely could do that too, but this is fine. So let's move on to the next part. In the next part, find the slope of the line on each of the graphs below. So again, I'm going to zoom in here, and I'm just going to, how I'm going to do this um, is when I draw my little triangles, which I did up there, if I move up and to the right, either of these directions, if I move up or right, my number is going to be positive. If I move down and left, my number is going to be negative. So, but visually, some of you might be able to look at this and go, okay, number one's a positive slope. Two is negative. Three is zero. Four is negative. Five is positive. Six is undefined. So you might be able to quickly tell me if it's positive or negative, and hopefully you'll get to that point. But the degree of steepness is what we're also looking at today. So number one, I'm going to pick two points. Let's see, right here right here and then my slope and just to make sure I've picked two good points I'm going to draw some other ones so rise over run how many do I go up and over to get from one point to the next so this is obviously positive and I'm going up one and over two that's one over two and it's positive positive. and we can make sure our answer is positive and in fact our um, the type of slope that it is, it rises from left to right, so it is positive. So we've got it. Let's go on to number two. I automatically know that my slope is going to be negative, but let's let's count and make sure. So let's pick two points. Let's see right there, right there. Those are good ones. And I know it's a negative slope, but I'm going to go down. How many and over? How many to get from one point to the next? I'm going down. 2, so negative 2, over to the right, positive 3. That's negative 2 over 3. That's the slope. 
Okay, let's look here. Three, a horizontal line. Is that zero slope or undefined? That is zero slope. So my slope is zero. Number four, that's obviously a negative slope, but I'm going to pick two points. Let's see, there's one. We've got another one right there, right there. Okay, so consistently we've got those, those points. And our slope is obviously going to be negative. I'm going down to get from one point to the next. I'll start with zero. So when I'm counting, I go down one, two, so negative two, and then I'm going to go over positive one from there. Negative two over one, and then how can I write that? I don't have to write it like that as a fraction if I have one in my denominator. I can just write negative two. Let's look at number five. Number five, I'm going to pick two points. And how many am I rising and running to get from one point to the next? I'm going to rise two, and I'm going to run one. That's a slope of two over one. Rise over run. So my slope is positive two. Okay. And looky there, so four and five, same degree of steepness, but one is a negative slope and one is a positive slope. Number six, what would that be? Vertical line is undefined. You also might see this right here, empty set, undefined. So that's how you find the slope of a graph. Let's move on to finding the slope from two points. So now let's talk about finding the slope of a line when given two points. So let's remember that slope is the ratio of the vertical change to the horizontal change. And when given two points on a line, we will use the slope formula to calculate its slope. And the, the slope formula is right here. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So as you recall, coordinate plane looks like this. This horizontal axis is my x-axis. This vertical axis is my y-axis. So the vertical change will be represented by our y values, and the horizontal change will be represented by our x values, which is why we subtract our y values in our numerator and we, why we subtract our x values in our denominator. So let's get started. So this is our formula. Okay, and again, I'm going to be substituting values in for these variables, but this minus sign is part of my formula. Just remember that. So on number seven, this says use the slope formula to find the slope of the line that contains each pair of points. So if these are my points, the first thing I'm going to do is label them. X1, Y1, X2, Y2. And when you get really good at this, you won't need to label them anymore. But in your numerator, your formula is y2 minus y1. And here's what I like to do. y2 minus y1 is 5 minus 3 over x2 minus x1 is 3 minus 2. So my slope is 5 minus 3, which is 2, and 3 minus 2, which is 1. Simplify that. Always, always simplify. It's just 2. So let's move on to number 8. Same type of thing. We're going to label x1, y1, x2, y2. So if this coordinate right here, if this x value is x1, then the y value that's in the same ordered pair is y1. Okay? So if that's x1, then that y value is y1. So let's do y2 minus y1, 10 minus 7, over x2 minus x1, which is 5 minus 1. 10 minus 7 is 3, and 5 minus 1 is 4. So my slope is 3 over 4. So with that said, if you wanted to make this first ordered pair x2 and y2, and this one x1 and y1, and you plugged it into your formula that way, totally works. It'll be that you'll end up getting the same exact values. So let's move on to number nine. So as you can see, this is our first example with some negative 
values in here for our x and y coordinates. So x1, y1, let's do this, x1, y1, x2, y2, and we're going to do y2 minus y1. So negative 1 minus 3, negative 1 minus 3 over 6 minus negative 6. 6 minus, and I'm going to write it like this first, negative 6. Okay, so now when we're simplifying this, if you're a calculator person, you need to put it in your calculator exactly, exactly as you see it, negative 1 minus 3. Or if you remember our integer rules, negative 1 minus 3, same signs add and keep, that's negative 4. And then what do I do when I have two negatives? I make it one sign, I combine them to a positive. I do have students that go ahead and just write that as a step. So negative 4 over, what is 6 plus 6? That's 12. And then you always want to simplify your fractions. So how do we simplify? Negative 4 over 12. That simplifies to negative 1 over 3. Let's move on to number 10. Number 10. x1, y1. x2, y2. Negative 2 minus negative 5. So watch this negative 2 minus negative 5 over 6 minus 8. So let's simplify this. Negative 2 minus negative 5. I like to have one sign in front of each number, so I'm going to combine these to make it a plus over, and I can go ahead and do 6 minus 8. What is 6 minus 8? It's negative 2. Now let's combine negative 2 and positive 5. What do we get? positive 3. So my slope is positive 3 over negative 2. And I can write it just like that, or you could also just write it like this, negative 3 over 2. It's fine. Either way is fine. Okay, let's move on to number 11. x1, y1, x2, y2. And again, you can just, you can label it x2, y2, or x2, y2, and x1, y1, but for the sake of consistency, this is how I do it. So y2 minus y1 is 5 minus 5 over negative 3 minus 9. What is 5 minus 5? Well, that's 0 over negative 12. Well, anything, 0 divided by anything is just what? 0. So this slope is 0. So what does that mean if it has 0 slope? Well, it's a horizontal line. Oh, well, look at our two points. This these two points lie on the line 9, 5, so right 9, up 5. Well, that's not going to be up 5. Right 9, up 5 would be like right there. And then left 3, up 5. So if I connected those two points, that would be a horizontal line. So yes, in fact, the slope of this line is 0. There was no change in our, um, in our y values. Okay. So let's move on. Number 12, x1, y1. Let's use a different color here. x1, y1, x2, y2. And I'm going to do 6 minus 3 over negative 1 minus negative 1. Negative 1 minus, then there's that negative 1. So don't forget that minus sign is in your formula. So 6 minus 3 is 3. And then you know I want you to rewrite that to a plus 1. Well, what is that? What is negative 1 plus 1? It's 0. Can you have 0 in your denominator? You cannot. The slope of this line is undefined. You cannot divide by 0. It is undefined. There is no slope. Well, let's look at these points. If I have my coordinate plane and I'm graphing this point, negative 1, 3, it's about right there. Negative 1, 6 is about right there. Oh, well, looky there. If I connect those two points, it's a vertical line. There is no slope. It's not even a function. Okay, it's a vertical line. No slope. It is undefined. And this concludes your notes over finding the slope of a line when given either a graph or a set of ordered pairs. I hope it was helpful.